What's up nerds, I'm Sai and I'm going to give you my review of season 2 of one of the most talked about documentaries of the past couple of years, Netflix's Making a Murderer. If this is your first time at Movie Nerds, then hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss a thing. And while you're at it, you may as well hit that like button too. For those of you who haven't seen Making a Murderer, it's the incredibly tragic true story of two Wisconsin locals, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey, who were convicted of the brutal rape and murder of Teresa Halbach in 2007. Avery was recently exonerated in 2003 from an 18 year stretch in prison after being wrongly convicted of rape back in 1985. Avery was the victim of corrupt officials with a personal vendetta to put him behind bars and so set out to target Manitowoc County for a $36 million lawsuit in compensation. In 2007, Avery and his nephew Brendan Dassey were arrested and convicted of the murder of Teresa Halbach. The Emmy Award winning documentary from Maura Demos and Laura Riccardi, which is filmed over a 10 year period, is very much in favour of Avery and Dassey's innocence and the extraordinary lengths that the Manitowoc County Police have gone to to incarcerate them, including the suggestion of planting evidence and manipulating and coercing Brendan Dassey into a confession, who was a minor at the time. Season 2 follows suit, except with it only being a couple of years since the original documentary was released, then this is filmed over a shorter period. This gives the filmmakers more time to go back and focus on certain aspects of the original case in exceptionally more detail. For those of you who have already seen the first season, this is an opportunity to go back and look at the evidence, the story and the people who were involved in incarcerating Avery and Dassey. Thanks to the original documentary, Avery has acquired himself a new post-conviction lawyer in the form of bulldog Kathleen Zellner, who infamously exonerated a man named Ryan Ferguson after doing 10 years of a life sentence for murder. Zellner enlists the help of scientists and specialists to dissect Avery's case by using modern methods to test the authenticity of the evidence provided in his first trial. Almost like an episode of CSI. An example of this is taking the original bull case and is said to have killed Teresa Halbeck and testing it for bone fragments, which, of course, they didn't find any. From then on, it's pretty much the Kathleen Zellner show, as the documentary follows her story and her attempts to get Stephen Avery a second trial, and also prove on a number of occasions how the evidence provided in the original case was completely fabricated and points towards another person or maybe some other suspects. For a short period, season two deals with the backlash of the original documentary and forcing opinions and protests from both sides of the fence. We see some developments since the show aired on Netflix and how that's affected members of the family and people closest to Avery and Dassey. Dassey's mother Bob, who's tormented by grief but never given up hope, and Avery's mum and dad, who are sadly and noticeably older and weary that they may pass on before he ever gets out. Beyond all the shocking revelations and the high-priced lawyers speaking technical jargon, beyond all the sinister undertones, there's a far more humble prestige at the centre of this documentary in the form of Avery and Dassey, who are blissfully oblivious to the lengths that people have gone to to get them their freedom. Season 2 of Making a Murderer sets out to do exactly what it's supposed to and that's reignite the public interest in a case that the American judicial system seemingly wants to brush under the carpet. Whether they're successful or not, well that's for you to find out. But until next time, I'll see you nerds at the movies.